everybody. Glorious Friday it is. How are we doing? How's everyone doing today? So today on Six Figure Networking Secrets, how do you pre-qualify your clients, right? So you've gone through the process of networking, you've spent the time, you've gone to the networking events, you've had those wonderful conversations, you pitch what you do, you connect it with people, you've got the business cards, and then you follow it up with them, but then what do you do when you get them on the phone, or right? People or pre fee. It's kind of like a self fee. Sorry. I spelled it wrong. We'll fix it. It's all good. <laughs> no worries. Yes. So what do you do when you get on the phone? When you follow up with them, do you just call them, follow up and immediately go into a woman one-on-one? -on -one? Well, you could. You could. So there's a lot of people with networking that collect business cards. We've, we've talked about all these. And if you don't remember the beginning episodes, go back go and back watch them. and watch them all. If you're struggling at making networking successful for you, then we advise you to really get serious about this and go back and watch some of these episodes or reach out to us. We're happy to, happy to connect with you. So a lot of people get to grab their business cards and they don't know what to do with them. So that the key is get them to a system, follow up with them, and we don't like to just jump right into one-on-ones. We did that. We did that. In fact, we and, did a lot of And that. I just had a client, I called this morning with a guy that, yeah, you could do a lot of one-on-ones and you could set up coffee appointments and it's great. And that's, that's a great way to meet people. And connect, build relationships. Build lots of rapport and relationships. And we advise you to do that in the beginning if you're brand new to this. And if you're looking to truly start really monetizing this gift that you have, whatever that gift is, and you want to share it and get it out there, one-on-ones are a lot of time. Yes, they are. I'm not saying it's a waste of time, it just takes a lot of time. So the key is to qualify, break down who would be a good quality prospect and who are you specifically trying to niche down to, right? Discover who you're, what, what person you're trying to help solve that problem. And if you're trying to build this huge database, then by all means, do a whole bunch of one-on-ones. And um, by doing that, you're gonna waste a lot of time as far as connecting with as many prospects as you can because you can make a lot more phone calls and follow up with people that you met in a networking event than you could just doing all one-on-one -on -one appointments. So keep that in mind. So that is one of the big things that we have been doing personally in our own company. In fact, this is a Facebook Live in the future, but really figuring <laughs> out who your potential avatar is. Because then when you're going through these networking events and you're having these conversations on the phone and you're pre-qualifying the, um, the client before you actually go to the one-on-one, -on -one, you're thinking in the back of the mind, do I have a service that really is gonna add value to this person? Because if you don't, then there's no reason why you are gonna go down and have a one-on-one -on -one unless you're right now, what you wanna do in your business is build relationships and, and expand your network, then to, by all means, go and do lots of one-on-ones. It's a really great way to get referrals. Though if you're really going in with an intention to make a sale, you wanna pre-qualify them and you need to know who specifically is your avatar client. Yep. Who can you solve their problem? What is their pain points and what do they want out of their life? And if that's not the person on the telephone, then you don't want to do a one-on-one -on -one with them. Because it's just more time. And you may yeah. like them. And if you want a friend, then by all means, go do it for friendship and relationships. Yes. And um, and that, that will soak up a lot of time if you're really trying to put some money and some sales in the bank now. Yeah. That's the one thing I will say about sales is if we're connecting with people over the phone, over the phone is the most sure way, most guaranteed way to close someone to help them and serve them so you can make some money and you can exchange that energy. Absolutely. And so if you do, and another thing to consider when you're talking to them on the phone, okay, so so maybe they are your avatar and maybe they do have, or maybe they have a problem that you absolutely can solve. Um, and they have all the criteria that you know that you could really truly serve them, but are they somebody that's gonna take action? Um, or do they even have the money? Right, so these are all questions when you're on that pre-qualifying call. Once you have rapport, and if you don't know how to build rapport, then go back and listen to our Selling to Serve series because we break down rapport or come to one of our um, advanced sales trainings. We'll teach you all about rapport. But building rapport, asking questions, then you once you have that trust from the person on the phone, you can start asking those questions about the finances because you truly are coaching them and serving them. And let's not brush over rapport. Rapport is so important. Yes. So many people think they have it with clients or prospects or leads and guess what they don't yes you don't really have rapport in fact some people think they have rapport with their spouse and they may or may not <laughs> and you have to get back into rapport with you people know, that are closest to you we break rapport and we get back into rapport all the time all the time all the time so if by the way the resistance of the client if you're asking questions to truly serve them 
if they're resisting or you get an intuition or feeling that they're 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 kind of clamming up or shutting down or putting on a shield then they are that means that you don't have rapport in nlp we talk about um resistance in a client as a lack of rapport and, so and here's the thing you've gone to the networking event you've met them you've shaken their hand you maybe you've got their business card you got their number you may at some level built enough rapport so that if you called them and reach out you could build even more rapport let's not forget that building rapport over the phone can be just as lethal just as important just as powerful as meeting in person at a one-on-one -on -one. and if you're really good on the phone you can build rapport even quicker faster better and get to a successful um, end result and another thing to consider too maybe when they're at the networking event they were coming in with their highest and best and they're in a good mood and they were like really open and it was easy to connect with them <laughs> and maybe something happened and then all of a sudden this, this part showed up you're like a totally different person this I dragon even, came I out i even have people and i've talked <laughs> about this on another facebook live where i had a really great conversation with this woman and then when i called her back she pretended like she didn't even know me and it's like she knew who I was, but well, her part came out. So the part of her I was talking to in the moment didn't remember me. So, so. If you're ever talking to somebody and all of a sudden a different part of them comes out and says, what do you mean? I never wanted to develop and work on myself. I don't want to close out the call and then call them back on a different day. Yeah. Because most likely they're in a part of, in NLP, we know that people have parts and it's usually from trauma or significant emotional events. <laughs> and sometimes a different person will show up that day. So you can call and them don't back take it different. personal. Yeah, don't take it personal. Don't take it personal. It's just business. It's sales. We all have to make more sales in yeah. order to grow our business and scale. And if you find that person, call them back on a different day. Don't take it personal because hey, it happens to everyone. And um, if you are letting that get in the way, as far as like a, an unconscious block, because you're like, man, it just knocks you down, and you can't get back that self esteem. You can't get back the confidence and the power to continue on with your day and make more calls then chances are there's a huge growth moment there, growth area, actually. So the, 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 one of the things to consider when it comes to pre-qualifying the client, this is a huge rule that we follow in our company. Not everybody is a client. And stop making it personal about, you know, like literally, like you want to be on the power side of literally filtering through these people to see if it's a good fit for them as well as for you. You don't have to work with everybody. No. Nope. In the bit in the beginning of the business, when you're you know starting off entrepreneur, solopreneur, you know, you're trying to make money, you have this gift to share with the world and you want to go out and help and serve everyone. And not everybody needs your product or service. And honestly, do you really want to work with everyone? You don't. Because we don't. <laughs> we don't want to, we don't want to work with people that aren't willing to take action. We That's don't want to, we don't want to work with people that when we say, Hey, if they say, gosh, I've got this problem. I'm struggling in my business. I'm not making the kind of money I want to make. And we say, great. We want you to snag 20 leads and go call them today. Yeah. If that person doesn't do it, then we don't want to work with that person. We don't want to work with people that aren't willing to take responsibility for their life like some people that are in victim consciousness and they're okay being there because we know from the morphogenic field, which means your network or who you surround you with lowers your vibration. If you're around people that are in victim consciousness that just continue to attract everything that they don't want in their life and they're happy staying there, you can't force anybody to change and you can't want it more than they want it. There's a lot of people out there that want to want it and they're not willing to do the work and we're not willing to work with those people. And they talk a great talk and they make a great story. Yes. That's why the whole your net worth is your network or mm -hmm. your network is your net worth because the people that you're around, that consciousness, right? And the, mm -hmm. the, the way they're growing their businesses, the way they're talking to their customers, <clears throat> all of that is how much they make. Yep. Right? It's a direct reflection of that. So we don't want to work with people that don't respect boundaries. Yep. Think about it because boundaries are what give you the free time that you have to grow and scale your business. And if people don't respect boundaries, you're going to have problems with those clients. And I'm sure that you've all worked with clients <laughs> in the past because maybe you had commission breath or maybe you just really, really wanted to help that person. You wanted to help them more than they wanted to help themselves. And they had the lack of boundaries and maybe you had the lack of boundaries and they ended up draining your energy throughout the entire time. And no matter what you did, made them happy. And those type of clients, we don't want to work with. Those are the and clients so we have to specific. say no to. We yes. have to say no to those clients. Yes. We had somebody that was um, recently we talked to, like she absolutely wished she didn't hire this client. And I was like, well, have you ever fired a client? She's like, no, I've never fired a client. Oh my gosh. Yes. I mean, that's a huge growth moment. For those of you out there that have never fired a client to whatever, make it right, refund them the money, do whatever it takes to make it right to get rid of them as fast and as cleanly as you can by maintaining your integrity, maintaining your 
um, your reputation, then do it because firing a client could be the most powerful thing that one could do. Exactly. And if you truly pre-qualify your clients, because we, I think of it as we almost have one, two, three different stages that we take our clients through that the entire time we're thinking in the back of our mind. We didn't used to do this, by the way. This is just something that we've done over time because we made the mistake and now we're filtering through. We're very, very clear on who we want to work with and who we don't want to work with. We have three stages, the pre-qualifying call, then the actual sales thing, and then the actual discovery to make sure that they're a good fit to where they're going to get a hundred percent results and we're going to be happy doing it. And they are too. And we don't work with people that we don't necessarily like being around and yeah. that's okay too, because I don't want to be drained by somebody that I don't necessarily enjoy being around. I Meaning taking on somebody okay. else's projection, taking yes. on somebody else's energy. Cause here's the thing. We all have a choice. You have a choice, right? We all have a choice on who we work with, who we hang out with, who we associate with, who we hire, yeah. who hires us. And so we have that choice. And if we don't like the people that we're around, then we can make that change. Yes. There's no rule book that says that you have to work with people that you don't appreciate being around. In fact, you shouldn't because there's somebody out there that will help and serve that person that will enjoy those certain things that you don't necessarily like. Yep. And that's okay. Not everybody's a client. So the main, the biggest reason why we want to do this pre-qualification is for you to save your time and to start filtering out the people that are not your client. To be more successful and be extremely efficient with your time. Yes. It's not a matter of being mean or, you know, rejecting people. Like we've all hired somebody that we wish we didn't hire. So how can we make better choices, right? Staying at cause, right? Staying responsible for the amount of action that we take with the right people. Because Man, working with great people is so much fun. It's so much easier. And it's staying with integrity of your values as a business owner. Because I know that I only want to work with people that are on the same page with values. And otherwise, I feel like I'm out of integrity. And, you know, you don't know that until you know it. And so one of the things that you could do um, when you start thinking about your avatar or specifically who you want to work with, start writing out your values, what's important to you and your company, and then are these people fulfilling that values? Yep. So, I mean, I, I cannot say enough, like how important it is to pre-qualify your clients. And you do the same process. That The cool thing is the questions that you ask are exactly the same questions that we talked about in the Selling to Serve series. Like what specifically do you want? What is your biggest challenge right now? What is your biggest frustration in your business? What are you excited about it? What are you not excited about? If I could help, if I had a magical wand right now and I could just poof all your problems away. What's the what, one thing what would that, be? that you would want solved? Right, right now. now that right would transform now. your life and this goes universal for anything and you just get more specific and if, if you want more um, instructions on that go back to that series and listen to the step two which is asking questions um, and you really want to do this in the pre-qualify and in the five-step sales process so we have two different we have two different stages of how we do our sales because we want to make sure the person on the phone is a actual qualified lead before we spend an hour doing the sales process, right? Another thing to throw out there is um, the perceptions projection is, listen, if you're attracting clients that you can't stand and you keep attracting clients that you don't want to work with, but you say, hey, this is all I have. If I don't take on this client, I won't make any money. Yeah. Think about the person that you are and attracting who you are. Who do you want to attract? right? Because we tend to attract the kind of client that we are. If we're the client that's buying stuff and then asking for a refund, if we're the kind check of client projection. buying something and then taking it back because we weren't happy with the product or service, check that projection because you're going to attract clients like that. So in other words, what behavior do we do when somebody, when we need a service or a product that we go pay for or we invest in? Yeah. And if we aren't that ideal client, become that ideal client. I hope that may, may settle or, or resonate with some, <laughs> and some people, um, it's a tough pill well, to swallow. We're, we're learning this about <laughs> ourselves. I mean, we're checking our projections all the time. If something shows up in our reality, like in the sales process, by the way, you will project all of your greatest fears, your, all of your blocks, all, all your of your money blocks, all your stuff. stuff. 
into the sales process. Right into that process. Same thing goes for coaching and training. Like when we're, when we're sitting in a training, all of our biggest fears, all of our blocks, all of our unconscious behaviors and patterns show up in the training. All the boundary testers show up and they test all of our boundaries until we become aware of it and then we can do something about it. As soon as we change it in ourselves, it's like magic. Our, um, our environment completely changes and people start showing up differently. So same thing goes for networking. Same thing goes for the sales process process same thing goes for the telephone so if you have any sort of block around the telephone it will show up in your telephone calls all of a sudden you'll get calls <laughs> <laughs> all of a sudden calls will come in and you'll be like oh my gosh I don't want to take these calls yeah but it's opportunity it's money and speaking of boundaries boundaries are set by telling a client no yes when you tell a client no and you say no, I don't do this this and this and we aren't able to serve you this this and this and we'll however we are going to help you with this, this, and this. When you lay that boundary up front, it is so, oh gosh, it's, that felt so good. It wasn't as hard and as bad as I thought it was gonna to be to tell a client no. And part of the no is if you're saying yes to everything, you're saying yes to, oh my God, these extras, and then you're running yourself all ragged for a client, you've already broken a boundary. You gotta start saying no. It, it, it feels so empowering to tell a client no. I can't help you with that because that's not what that package includes. However, yeah. if you want to invest a little bit more, you will get this, this, and this. Which one would you like to do? And it's not so bad to say that. Some people couldn't imagine telling a client no, and it just goes to show you I'm, I'm always curious to say, huh, they might have an issue with boundaries, and I wonder what other area of life that shows up in their life because it's not the only area. And the boundaries start in your business in the qualifying, in the qualifying call. Because you are literally saying to the universe, if you accept that, if you if you're having a conversation and you know in your heart that it's not going to be a good fit, and then you go out and meet with them anyways, it's saying to the universe. It's also saying to that person that you don't really take your own. I'm boundaries. willing to work with anyone. Exactly, and so then you're going to get diluted type of uh, clients, and you're going to get diluted results in your clients. Trust us, we've done this. And then you'll this. feel like your business is Barnum and Bailey's Circus. <laughs> oh, let them all in. <laughs> Open the tent and let them in. Oh, please. Trust oh. me. How do we know this? It's almost like I'm getting a download. Hey, <laughs> yes, I have had circus clients. You before. know what? In our mentors, and I allowed it to happen. That, and of course, we did it anyways because we had to figure it out for ourselves. And now we're very, very clear of our list of who yeah. we want to work with and who we don't. Do's and do and nots. who we really get success for because it's out of integrity to jump on to a sale and accept a person's money when you're not going to be able to truly serve them. And that's why people have buyer's remorse. And that's why there's people that give you bad testimonials because the boundary wasn't set up in the beginning. And the, the expectations have got to be there. Exactly. Right? And you've got to lay out those expectations right up front and so what better way to do it back to our networking yes then right there on the call before you even do a one-on-one -on -one. exactly what better way to do that is over the phone right not face to face and get good at listening to language get really clear on how people talk that's one thing that really sets us apart that from most coaches is because most coaches don't know language they don't know how to unpack language the way Deb and I do and we unpack it in such a way that gets inside someone's mind and how they think, how they behave, and the results they're gonna get based on the words that come out of their mouth. Say less and have a lot more. That is so important to get right there is yeah. language, folks. Language, language, lang language. And the last part of this I wanted to cover is okay, so one on one or virtual? Well, it depends on where you're at in your business. I still block off time to actually go and have coffee dates with Absolutely. people. Absolutely. Because I love doing it, I enjoy doing it, I love having conversation. I specifically choose who I wanna do it with. And then I also do do virtual coffee dates, sure. right? And so like if- We make sure that they make their cup of coffee. Yes. As we make ours. Yes, <laughs> yes. And you know, if like, some people, some some networking events, they're big on only doing one-on-ones. Well, I like the flexibility of being able to choose myself, and that's my own choice. So we do virtual as well as- I think that's well as, what's great about being an entrepreneur, and yeah. especially if you're a coach, is that you have choice. Exactly. We get to make choices. Choices in what we do, choices mm -hmm. in how we do it, and choices whether we do it at all or not, like who we work with. It's a great choice to have, is be able to hire a client and fire a client at will because it's and your choose to spend time with choice. Start choosing instead of just reacting. Yep.
Because once you start choosing consciously, your life will transform. You're more aware of the behavior that gets you the results that you want to catapult your business. And the key is to pretend like you already have hundreds of million dollars in the bank. What would that person choose to do with their time? <clears throat> if you act that way, you'll start attracting it into your life. If you're taking massive action. Yes. And when you say course. massive action, of course, of course. for many out there, massive We're action inspired massive action is focused, inspired massive action. Yes. And then some people out there might need to times that by five. I'm actually 10 or 10 times or maybe 20. So if you make call on the person, if you normally make five calls, and we're not talking about action, like cleaning your room or getting, <laughs> getting organized, organized or creating the running logo, errands or, you know, working on the website, getting ready to get ready. Yes. To get, get ready. ready to get ready. To be ready. To wait, 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 I'm not ready. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Let's get ready. So, so yeah. if it's five times and you normally make, say, just five calls or maybe five touch points, or you want to connect with five people in a day, if you times that by five, that'd be 25. Yeah? Yeah. Or if you 10 times it, yeah, 50. Why not? What the hell? Let's go big. Let's so, get some results. Uh, take some action. Let us know how it goes. And remember, if you enjoyed this and you feel like you're missing any pieces, then go back and listen to all the series. We had 10 episodes about how to create a six figure business. And we did it in less than 10 months through networking. And then also go to listen um, to the selling to serve series. And you can find all those videos in one place on our YouTube channel on Jaeger training. And last but not least networking. Yes. To be successful. You're either at cause or you're in effect. What side of the equation are you on when it comes to networking? That's important. Before you even show up, before you're even getting dressed to go to the networking event, are you dreading it? Are you rejecting it? Are you embracing it and saying, I'm going to kick some ass. I can't wait to meet some people. I can't wait to get some contacts in my database. Coming with an open heart. To say, I'm going to help people. I'm going to serve people. You know, making their life greater and, and helping them solve the problems that they truly are. I'm going to go solve by, some problems right? and make some action happen. And then you're going to get financial abundance for that. And then you're going to be able to put that back into your business to create it and scale it. Because at if, the end of the day, I mean, that's really what we're here for. And if you're at cost, then you're going to move the needle forward. If you're yeah. in effect, then you're going to be not moving the needle forward, which is the opposite of abundance, which is the opposite of making money. And I prefer to make money and help people versus the latter. <laughs> it's just, I'm telling you, I've been broke. I've had money. Yes, we have. I prefer money. Just, it just helps the world go around. It helps you help others. Well, it allows you to really give back and serve. It gives you options. And then you can travel and you can do all the things that you love to do. It gives and you, you can choice. Really, you can connect with people at a deeper level and you can give back. So if you have any money blocks, hard to give money away if you don't have it. I come promise. to the seven day practice Try training that. because we help you let go of that. I can't, you can't take something from nothing, <laughs> <laughs> but you can create something from nothing with your mind and put it out in your future. So, yeah. so thank you so much for spending time and hopefully you crush this week. Yes. I'm share hoping. this with somebody you love. Um, if you like it, go ahead and like it and share it with someone you love and connect us, um, connect with us on YouTube. Um, we want to build our following. So thank you so much. Have a fantastic weekend. Look forward to seeing you See soon. Ya. Bye. Bye-bye.